Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, January 3rd, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One rather common social engineering technique is the use of URLs inside PDF documents. Now, a lot of spam filters uh, aren't able to really extract them and filter PDFs properly. So DDA came up with a Python script to do that for you. Now, originally, Didier talked about this in a diary that he published on the 24th, but uh, he got quite a bit of feedback uh, based on that blog post. So today he kind of updated that by adding a video with a walkthrough to the tools that he's using in order to accomplish this. And this weekend, a security researcher who goes by the pseudonym of Sigusa published an exploit for a privilege escalation vulnerability in Mac OS. According to him, the exploit works for any version of OS X or Mac OS back to 2002, possibly earlier ones. Guess he hasn't tested any earlier ones yet. This exploit takes advantage of a vulnerability in the IO HID family macOS kernel driver. Now, to take advantage of this vulnerability, an attacker has to have already local user access to the system in order to launch the exploit. These type of exploits are very common in pretty much all operating systems. If you remember for Windows, for example, there's usually a whole set of kernel driver vulnerabilities that can lead to escalation in every monthly update. Sadly, Apple was not notified of this vulnerability prior to the release of the exploit. Now, since this is only a local approach escalation vulnerability, I don't think Apple will make this a huge priority and expect an update with any of the next few regular updates, I would think, sort of over the course of this year. That's at least my guess how Apple would address a vulnerability like this. Now, over the last week, there was also the Large Chaos Communication Congress in Germany, one of the largest European meetups of security researchers. And I will link to a list of all the recordings of talks in the show notes, but a couple of talks that I found particularly interesting One looked at various charging stations for electric cars and how they can be abused and how the protocols that are used here for billing and charging can be abused in order to essentially break the billing process and obtain free power from these stations. Another talk that I thought was sort of interesting, but I don't see it listed yet in the recordings, was about LTE and 4G networks and how they can be attacked. In the past, there has been a lot of talk about attacking 3G networks or 2G networks. Haven't seen a lot about 4G and LTE. In particular, this talk focused somewhat on the diameter protocol. You may have heard of SS7, that's sort of the traditional signaling protocol info networks, and that is known to be very vulnerable and can be used to intercept calls. Now, Diameter is supposed to replace SS7. It was actually originally designed as a replacement for RADIUS, the network authentication protocol. Now, probably one of the most obvious attacks that are discussed in these talks are downgrade attacks. In order to be compatible with older equipment, older networks, there is a possibility to downgrade from diameter back to SS7. And then of course, you have access to all of these old flaws. As I said, I'll have a link to the videos in the show notes. Uh, Many of the videos are in German, but you'll also find a good number in English. 
And if you ever used one of these GPS trackers that are able to report their location back to a central system so you can track, for example, vehicles and such remotely, you probably wondered, hey, how does this particular device actually authenticate itself to this service? Because after all, you typically never enter a username or a password. Well, it turns out there isn't much authentication for these systems, which then can lead to attackers having access to your geolocation data. There's a very comprehensive blog post out there that was published yesterday and updated today that lists a long list of these geolocation services and their URLs that are vulnerable essentially to authentication bypass. In many cases, you will be able to change Change the password, which appears to be one, two, three, four, five, six by default for most of these services. However, there appears to be at least one where you cannot change the password, so you're definitely vulnerable. In general, the article recommends that you keep as little data as possible with the service because even if you do fix the password, that's probably just sort of the tip of the iceberg as far as vulnerabilities go with these systems. In some cases, the attacks may actually go beyond just snooping on your location. There is also a possibility to disable geofencing, for example. These devices are often used to prevent theft, for example, of construction equipment. So in this case, that hacker could turn off the geofence or turn off tracking of the device altogether in order to steal a piece of equipment. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.